it's Jessie V. I am so bright and there are skulls behind me. So as you can probably see, I do have a new backdrop for August. I love it because there's flowers, so it's still summery, but there's skulls to guide us into spooky season. If you guys didn't know, I celebrate Halloween on September 1st. So this backdrop is kind of like a preview. It's a summery slash Halloween preview. And I hate that I'm like in the way of the best skull. Sorry, dude. So because I have a new backdrop, that means I'll be announcing the winner of last month's backdrop. The giveaway was on Instagram. You had to tell me what you would name your mystical forest. The winner is Nishat W-B-E underscore. I'm sorry if I totally pronounced that wrong, but her mystical forest was the Forbidden Forest of the West, which she says sounds very mysterious, and I love it too. Thank you to everybody who entered, and if you would like to enter to win this month's backdrop, all you have to do is be subscribed to this channel, my Jessie B channel, turn on your notification bell, and then once again, head over to my Instagram. It is Jessie V. Give it a follow and DM me the last five emojis that you used. I don't care if any of them are embarrassing or weird. I want to see them, so be honest. And that's all you have to do to enter to win this backdrop. I have two more very quick announcements. The first one is that the mystery boxes are getting very close to being sold out. So if you would like one, I have linked it down below. We have so many awesome, magical, cool things for back to school. This is my favorite back to school box that we've done yet. So if you would like one before they are gone, I have linked it down below. And also, if you are a member of this channel, the creepy strawberry shortcake video is up right now. You can go watch it. If you're not a member yet, all you have to do is press that join button and then you're able to watch the littlest pet shop video, the monster high video, and the new strawberry shortcake video because I'm always posting extra content over there. All right, so without further ado, let's get into this video. We're going to be talking about another very creepy doll. Anytime I do a video about dolls, I just, it's, it's my favorite. And this story is called Beth Parsons Doll. This story takes place back in the early 1900s. It's important to note that this was back when there were not a lot of medical advances. So the child mortality rates were a lot higher than they are now. Healthcare was just not very good back then. Back in those days, there were two very common traditions that happened whenever a child passed away. The first very strange tradition is that they would often take a photograph of the child after they have passed before they were buried. They made sure that in that photograph, they were dressed in their really nice burial clothes. It was a really common thing back then. I can't even show you photos of that because honestly, they're really disturbing and I probably am not even allowed to on YouTube. And the second common thing was to bury the child with their most cherished possession, typically their favorite doll, blanket, or other toy. So this was the case with a little girl named Beth Parson. She was said to be this angelic little girl. She was so sweet and she passed away at the young age of four years old and it devastated the farming community that she lived in. The exact cause of Beth's demise has not been recorded, but the most common account was that she succumbed to diphtheria in 1907. Now diphtheria was this really dangerous bacterial infection that usually affects the mucous membranes of your nose and in your throat. And this was a really common thing for children to pass away from back then. So let's talk about the doll that is obviously a huge part of this story. So per tradition, Beth was photographed post-mortem before she was buried. And before her tiny coffin was sealed, her mother put her favorite doll inside, gently placing it in her daughter's stiff, cold hands. Now, one thing that most people found very peculiar about this doll is how closely it resembled her, down to her hair color, her eye color. The doll was wearing this tiny yellow canary dress. This doll had been purchased from a door-to-door -door salesman as a gift for Beth's third birthday. She seldom let it out of her sight. She was always playing with it. She would spend hours on the porch swing talking to it. And she would clutch it very tightly at night before she went to sleep. And apparently she looked the same way while she was being buried. According to local legend, just two weeks after Beth Parsons' funeral, the doll was found in a sitting position on the porch swing of the Parson house. Now the girl's father was the one to find the doll just sitting there. And he thought that maybe his wife had placed the wrong doll into Beth's coffin. So without wanting to upset his wife or cause any huge fuss, he went to her gravesite, dug up her grave, opened the coffin and put the doll inside. He was actually surprised to see that there was no doll that had been buried with his daughter. And it was crazy because he was almost so 
sure that it was. The man told himself that he must have only thought his wife put the doll in there, and in her grief, she had forgotten to do it. But just a little bit over a week after the reburial, the doll appeared once again, this time caked with dirt. Its bright yellow dress was stained muddy brown, and she was sitting on a chair in Beth's old bedroom. Needless to say, the husband was not able to hide this from his wife anymore, and he was convinced that his own grief was playing mind tricks on him. Perhaps he only thought he put the doll in the coffin, and maybe instead he placed it outside somewhere, maybe near her grave. He was constantly second-guessing himself because he knew this was impossible. So he told his wife, and she thought that maybe something more sinister was happening with this doll. So she called a priest and had him come over to bless the doll before they put it back inside their daughter's coffin. The minister was present at the reburial this time, and his own journal corroborates the story. As you guys can imagine, the doll appeared once again. The couple found it at dawn the following morning, sitting upright on Beth's bed, which is where her mother had kept it when she was alive. But there was something slightly different this time. Sitting beside the doll was a small paper note. When they went to look at it, they saw that there was a seven-word question, barely legible in a childish scrawl, and it said, Why won't you let me come home? Shortly after this happened, the Parsons family donated the doll because they just could not continue burying it, continue seeing it. They were extremely spooked and upset. But even after this doll was donated to a new family, the doll would still seemingly abandon its subsequent owners and appear in various locations around the Parsons' house. They literally could not escape this doll ever. So let's talk about the newest owners after the Parsons passed away. When Mrs. Parsons died, she left no other children, and the doll was purchased purchased at an estate sale. The house was torn down shortly after, and the doll is said to have passed from one antique collector to another. And each collector who has owned this doll says that it likes to wander around constantly, which is really creepy. Now, one of these owners, her name was Clarita Bennett. She actually collected haunted objects, and so she purchased this doll in the late 1980s. And because the doll was so worn and dirty, she had to touch it up as best as she could. She replaced its rotting hair. She replaced its moldy clothing. She wanted to make the doll look as good as new. Now, during the doll's brief stay at Bennett's in-home museum, she set up a hidden camera in an attempt to document its occasionally strange behavior. And she usually did this with the other haunted objects that she had in her museum. She would set up night cameras to see if they would move around or show any activity. And she said that this doll would move all of the time, and she actually has video evidence of it. I'm not sure how real this is, if someone made it up. I don't even know how true this story is in general, but I'm gonna briefly show you the real footage of this doll moving its arm. It's actually really creepy, here you go. All right, so apparently Clarita Bennett passed away in 1992. And since then, this footage has been constantly shared and showed on paranormal websites. A lot of people know about it. And it's crazy because I had never actually heard about this case until like two days ago when I did research for it. But that is all I was able to find. If you guys know any more, definitely comment it down below and give this video a thumbs up if you want me to continue doing haunted doll stories. There are so many around the world. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't don't forget to enter to win the backdrop behind me. And don't forget if you would like one of the new mystery boxes, it is linked down below. And if you would like to join this channel, you can go and watch the strawberry shortcake video. But I hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day and I will see you in my next video. Bye!